Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Community Radio. I'm your host, Kim, and today is Thursday. And thank you, caller, for letting me know that you couldn't hear me just a second ago. Um, Again, today's Thursday. Um, I wanted to just make a quick announcement before we get started. Uh, The Anu Nation app is now up and running. Make sure you download that from the Google Play Store. It's a really cool app. You can chat with each other. You can... Uh, any spiritual services or whatever that we offer can be booked from the, from that app. You can view all the shows, um, any extras and uh, video extra videos, any extra wisdom chief has to pass on. Um, you can find it in the in that app as well. So make sure you utilize that. It is free to download. So uh, again, that's in the Google Play Store. And I also wanted to say that if you want to join the ministry, men or women, make sure you go to a anewlifeglobal.org and um, register there and let us know what you would like to um, participate in, okay? So today we had, um, I had a listener to uh, volunteer to kick the show off, which I'm thankful for. Thank you, Brother Armour. As you all know, this is a community effort and I'm not the only one that has to talk all the time. So I want to thank him for that. I'm going to go ahead and bring him in. We'll get started with today. Peace. Hi, greetings. 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 (laughs) Peace, family. How are you guys doing? Okay, Um, okay. So how's everything going, Sister Kim? Everything's going. Everything's going. All right, all right. So good, good. Productive and progressive, like she says. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, good. Right. Well, I've been expi- I was inspired uh, on on the previous show, and I went into uh, I guess a voyage. Uh, once again, one of these spiritual voyages that I think that we all go through once we get in tune with something. And Chief and Brother Byron was having a conversation about uh, the marketplace in Nigeria, and they had a very good conversation about how uh, a little bit of haggling here and a little bit of negotiations there that. Uh, we start to win friendships and uh, camar- camar- camaraderie or, or unity, uh, 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 togetherness through the uh, consumer and the producer. So mm-hmm. I was uh, looking at it as a holistic view, you know, and I was looking at it uh, holistically to the point where we start talking about our relationships. We talk about our businesses. We talk about our children. We talk about our happiness. We talk about our sadness. And I looked at it holistically, and through my understandings of IA, it was considered to be the great marketplace. So mm-hmm. I wrote, uh, I wrote a uh, short paragraph, and this is more just a, a, a I guess, short written uh, story, or I, I don't know how I would describe it. But uh, I, I wrote, I wrote something that maybe would. Uh, touch the listeners and hopefully we can have a good conversation about uh commerce and how we uh navigate through the planet the plan at especially and it's funny mm-hmm. because it, it, i went to sleep last night listening to the seven seals uh mm-hmm. the chief had did a show on the seven seals and we mm-hmm. and and it's a good thing i'll post that and i'm also going to post a, a video that uh that came through uh, during this voyage that was pretty interesting and it was about as two married women uh, they have a they have their own show but uh, they have they were having conversations about child support and providing mm-hmm. and how how uh, how uh, working together uh, is a better solution in their family and their households so I'll, I'll post it uh, a little bit later Okay. But uh, let me go ahead and read this uh, this uh, short story, I guess, or the statement mm-hmm. or the spoken word, and uh, hopefully we can get some purpose out of it. Okay. IA, the great marketplace, the place we voyage to find purpose, restoration, on to completion. We shop for complementary mates, experiences, wisdom, enlightenment, and transformation. We purchase these goods with, the, with will, perseverance, and gratitude. Sometimes the selection is good. Sometimes it's distorted. The journey will, through the journey, we will find that there was no good or bad. 
just that we weren't wise enough to choose correctly. So we stump a melon here, squeeze the avocado there, feed a hen with grain and corn, forge the iron with cool water, save the calories for a rainy day, and purchase trinkets for our ego to indulge. We do this all with the sight to secure our future of fu- secure our future and those around us. We fight Oya's wins. She's the owner. How dare we fight her push and pull? Instead, we should flow with her water currents, enjoy her aerated soil, be warmed by the breath of her fire, and comforted by the wind's howls. We should be energized by her use of Shango's electricity to deliver and retrieve life from one point to another. Change is good. So shop, produce, negotiate, innovate, and use the marketplace to its highest principle. Ile Efe Aye. Ashe, 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 O. All right. All right. And that was the inspiration I got out of it. And uh, it's been mm-hmm. something that I've been working on personally for about a year. And it's funny because uh, we've been speaking for quite a bit now on our our personal relationships, uh, mm-hmm. dealing with our complementary, dealing with right. men, dealing with how women speak with women, how men speak with men, and how we interact uh, amongst each other. And one of the things that I think we overlook because we're living in a, most of us live in America. And when we, uh, the way we think about commerce here in America is, is a little distorted to me. And it really throws, um, uh, an indigenous mind, uh, almost to the brink of insanity because we're trying to find balance, but we're finding balance in, we're trying to find balance inside of a system that doesn't work, work with us. Mm -hmm. And, um, you could tell it by how we have our relationships right now, how the men speak with the men, how the, how the women speak with the women and how the, how we speak together, together in a unit. And, um, I just wanted to open up the, 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 the insight inside of these things. Cause we've been really getting to the grain of a lot of conversations and I see a lot of good things coming out of it too, especially with like how uh, chief was mentioning about the calls with the females and have Lola, Nancy, you, and um, mm-hmm. uh, Michelle on a call. I'm really, that would be a hot show. I really think that's going to be a hot show, and it would be very informative all the way through. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, um, speaking of that show, we will uh, get to that show later on this month. I did speak with, well, I didn't speak with them, but uh, they contacted me via email, uh, Lola and Made from Love. And, or Nancy and um, they are everybody's in so we will organize that conversation and make sure we get that on coming up probably in a couple of weeks or so because I know uh, during this time Lola is working so she has to wait until she has the day off but she has agreed to do it but um, so you said you've, you've seen how um, our I guess relationship with commerce or just, you know, consumer and producer, as consumers and producers affect our relationship between each other? Because you were saying we were talking about uh, how men talk to men and men and women talk to each other and how women talk with each other. How do you, how, how do you feel like it affects, it affects those relationships? Well, one of the things uh, when it comes down to us is that we all have different views on what we think of as well, Okay. So some mm-hmm. of us uh, think that having monetary wealth is brings us everything. Some of us think that we have uh, family. Family brings us wealth. Some of us think uh, other things on what wealth is to them. Um, the, the thing that disturbs me is when, how we, when we look at money and we think having an abundance of money is going to cure all our problems. And that, that, I think inside of that situation, and I might be being a little general with it, but inside of that situation, we start getting um, into situations with brothers, brothers getting into situations, doing things that might be uh, against the community. Uh, we get uh, situations where brothers don't even 
take the time to educate themselves inside of something that they might be wanting to start a, a, a business, a family. They don't, they don't take the time out to learn themselves. And that, for, for brothers with brother, brothers, uh, for the men, that that really kind of throws the direction off. It, it doesn't show a projection or a, uh, a trajectory for a person, a male, to be inside of a community. So the trajectory is off, and then while this male with the off trajectory is having children with women and, 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 and trying to build a family, the tra- tra- trajectory of the male is off, so now the women and the children kind of go off with the trajectory of the male. And the conversations that we have, uh, and, and actually just the humility that we could take in, the humbleness that we could take in and learn more, it's not there because everybody thinks they know it all. Women, some women think they know it all. Some men think they know it all, and we're never able to build because when we sit, we sit down at a table. We have five five men thinking they know it all, and then we have five women that think they know it all, and we're just arguing about what the trajectory is. And I think that's one of the main situations uh, about us building our community and our unity in regards to. Um, regards to the commerce commerce mm-hmm. and, you know and just to be clear about when i say commerce i'm not just thinking about like hand-to-hand transactions i'm, I'm working in the marketplace oh, okay. i'm producing something i'm producing something i'm uh, uh i'm um uh, i'm selling something i'm buying something uh, it's not just basically that uh, when i speak of commerce family is commerce family is business uh when i speak mm-hmm. of friendships friendship is business you know, there's a give and take. There's a push and pull that happens within each relationship, and that, in in, you know, in our EFA in EFA studies, and this uh, I learned this a long time ago about IA, and it being the great marketplace is that when we come here, pardon me, <clears throat> when we come here, um, we're here to do transactions. We're here to experience. We are here to build wisdom. We're here to receive things and we're here to take things so Mm -hmm. what those those things those things that when we're here on the planet the planet once again like how chief broke it down Mm -hmm. is that we have a a certain purpose inside inside of this planet to do things and to to receive it then receive things and to give things so when we're our trajectories off and we're being influenced by maybe a system that's not working for the the a person a person's mind to be able mm-hmm. to go excuse me i'm still getting over a cold man mm-hmm. so, yeah, i'm getting over it i feel better but yeah. i feel better but mm-hmm. i'm still beginning to try but um mm-hmm. once, we, once we get on the plane and we're working with the system that's not allowing us to get our minds right in the trajectory that we need to get our bodies right get our Spirit, spirit right to the place that we need to move for. We're looking at we we start purchasing things. We start dating people. We start uh, uh, finding happiness in things that we really don't don't find happiness in. You know, we we get into these little situations, these little side roads where it's a distraction for us. So mm-hmm. that that's my base base uh, uh, base argument here. So okay. Okay, I remember, uh, well, as you were speaking, I was thinking about something I saw once, and somebody else was breaking this down. Uh, This has been a few years ago, but uh, it makes a whole lot of sense, and it's related to what you're saying, is, you know, it's it's almost like, okay, you you were put, you were born here on the planet to do something. It's like your parent, you know, telling you to run to the store, right? So they, they, they tell you, I need you to go to the store and buy, I need you to go to the market and purchase something specific, go and buy some oranges or something. So that is your purpose. She's sending you out or he's sending you out to go and purchase oranges. So on your way to purchase those oranges, you forget. It's like you had, you lose your memory or something. Something happens. You, you forget what you're what you're going to go and buy because you're distracted by all this stuff around you and everything that's going on on your way to the market. So you may stop here or stop there or have a conversation here, have a conversation there, 
you might get lost. Um, uh, you might, you know, ha- you might have to, or you might have to go back home mm-hmm. and ask your mother, what did you, what did you send me to the store for? I forgot. Mm-hmm. And then they'll send you back out. And then the same thing happens all over again. It's just like that scene in the matrix where, um, uh, Neo was shown that he was in a program and he was walking through the streets. And then he got distracted by the woman in the red dress. You know, yeah. for a minute, he, you know, it was like he was um, trying to figure out, he was like, what, what is going on? He started, you know, looking all around at everybody and seeing how this program was running. And then he got distracted. Same thing with going to the market. It's like you have a purpose. You have a, a list, a list of things that you're supposed to go and get. But sometimes you get distracted and you forget what it is. And a lot of us, because of the culture that we have adopted or um, whatever it is we're practicing at the time, um, we get, you know, we we don't know how to go back home to find out what it is that we need. So that's where your ori and, you know, your head washing, head cleansings and all of these practices that we have in, uh, in, in, in this tradition with the head and the different parts of the head. Um, That's where all that comes in because that's how you get back home. You know, you got to clear your head, so to speak. So we have, you know, you feed your head, you clean your head, you do all these things with your head so that you can remember, so that, so that you could, that's like your, you know, again, that's like you going back home to ask your parent, what did you send me to the store for? I forgot, you know, and then, so we, we do that to keep, you know, we do certain cleansings and certain feedings to kind of keep our head clear so that we can go back out into the market and purchase those things that we need, you know. So that's what I was thinking of as you were speaking. Um, I saw uh, someone did a video on that once. Um, I saw a that's few powerful. years ago. Mm-hmm. That's real powerful. That's real powerful, yeah. as you said. And especially going back home. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think once we, uh, I think just to go back to that is that, you know, when you get a chance to actually sit down and in, in, in quiet and, and be able to have a clean head and, uh, and mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> undistracted head, and you start finding that all the stuff that I have accumulated in my life mm-hmm. is like, it's unnecessary. This is unnecessary. There's nothing, this has no functionality. This doesn't serve me or my family any purpose. And yeah. um, then you start seeing that road again. And that's, mm-hmm. It's very powerful what you said, yeah, especially yeah. all the gems that you just gave. I agree completely. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me bring someone else in. I think uh, this is Sister Michelle, I believe. Greetings. Good morning, Sister Kim. Good morning. Uh, good day, Balawa. Greetings. I am doing. Balawa, thank you so much for that. That was beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank that you. really, that really, that was deep. Especially coming from an oh yeah, and that's what I'm going yeah. through right now. So that healed me because going against the grain and going at it alone, and against in, in a society that like is programmed the opposite way, can make you feel alone. You know, and like, am I doing the right thing? You know, but it feels right. But you know, so it, everything you said just hit home, and I'm grateful for it. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Change, change and thank good. you for stepping up good. and helping. Thank you for oh, yeah, stepping no. up yeah. and helping. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. that's what everybody should do. Is everybody that participating should always put in put in their emotion, uh, their their emotion inside of it to stay in motion. <laughs> yeah. Change is good. Change is Definitely. good. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. A change is needed. So how yep. are things going with you, Sister Michelle? What's on your mind today? Oh, well, I am, I'm in a really good state of mind. Um, a house is back, you know, to myself. I have the in-laws out for a while. And uh, my <laughs> stepdaughter and her daughter and her family are over. So oh, okay. we're just really happy. Yeah. We, got, we have two babies, well, three babies, four babies in the house. Oh, And wow. uh, everybody's just happy, yeah. There's a lot of magic going on. Okay. Uh, but it's just happy. You can't. You, you can only be but happy when you have so many divinity around. You know. Mhm. Mhm. Well, that's, like, awesome. that, that's awesome. 
Go ahead. But I'm I sorry. do have, I do want to, to share that um, um, I'm working on getting myself into a schedule. You know. Okay. Um, I've been I've been working on it mentally for like a month now because it's almost like I'm always playing like. But my life is not easy. My life, you can't just put my life in a box. You know, mm-hmm. how do you put the storms in a box? You know, you can't. My life is just, I go with it. You know, you can't just say, mm-hmm. I'm going to sit down right now and do this. Like, that to me seems so foreign, but I understand why it's so needed. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> I'm trying to rein all the winds and put them down into a schedule. And it's just been tough. And I, I'm my own worst boss. You know, because I'm like the best. Have you, have you asked your husband to um, do the schedule for you? You know what? I haven't. I think I should. Yeah. I yeah. will. That would be. <laughs> yeah, let him have him to make out the schedule for you. Definitely, because he can. Um, you know, men have that that vision that we don't. You know, like just like you said, we're chaotic. So. Even we, like you said, you've been thinking about this for a month. <laughs> and I know how I am with time. It's like, you know, I'm very much like you, just kind of just go with it. You know, whatever happens, happens. I just, you know, have some things in my head that I need to get done. But not really sure exactly how much time to put in for each one. So, you know, you still have that chaotic nature inside. And then, too, you know, we talked about the zero and the one. You know, the zero doesn't need anything. <laughs> so if, if left to our own, you know, left left on our own, we really don't, um, we don't move with a certain urgency, you know, as, as men do. So definitely have him, tell him, you know, uh, well, he knows your schedule. He knows what you do every day. So, yeah, have him to make it out for you. I bet you he can knock it out in a night. <laughs> I, I'm sure he will. Well, that's great. Thank yeah. you, sis. Thank you so much. That's what I needed to hear. Mm-hmm. All right. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to base, but thank you so much. Okay. Please, brother, thank, thank you. you. All right. Peace out. Right. I would like to chime in real quick. Sure. And I'll say it like this: what what goes on in the men's club stays in the men's club. But I will say this. She gave some good advice to the men, and mm-hmm. uh, he was advising that we get up a little bit earlier and focus on the things that we need to do. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, mm-hmm. uh, focus on the things that we need to do. Take some time to be in a quiet space to get our day started. So I just yeah. wanted to put that in there. And uh, I, just since then, since that conversation. I've been um, getting up like 5.30 in the morning almost every day. So mm-hmm. uh, it's been working for me, too. It's been getting me good. focused. Good, good. So the men's call was pretty was was pretty awesome. Did you have um, a few people on? Quite a few? What, what goes on in the men's club stays in the men's club. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. You know what? Yeah, I we said have. something about we... that. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, we had a good, good a number, a good amount of people, good participation. I, I really appreciate the brothers for having the conversations and opening up the way they did. Good, good. Yeah, I said something about that in the women's group on Monday. I was like, you know what? We've been, you know, every now and then on the show, we'll say a little bit about what we talked about on Mondays. We're gonna, we're gonna button up too. <laughs> So unless you're on that call, you won't know won't know what we talked about as well. So yeah, what happens in those clubs stays in those clubs. I think that's uh, um, uh, kind of keeping it keeping it separate and not speaking about it amongst one, uh, each other, unless you're in right. the house together. It um, right. it helps. It's definitely part right. of uh, part of us meeting. You know, keep some of that mystery between us. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I just want to let everybody but I know. Think, I, I, think, I think good points are always good to give out to the public. Good points like the mm-hmm. wake up, men work, wake up earlier, find some quiet space and organize your day. Good yeah. points. Yeah. Um, let me remind everybody, uh, we do have a new number. If you're uh, listening and you want to call in, the number is 515-605-9862. And just press the number one to be heard if you have any comments or, or questions about anything. Or if you have um, your own topic that you would like to speak on, 
that's perfectly fine too. Again, this is an open show. Um, we we don't have any particular you know set topic, but today Omar wanted to kick things off, and so he was speaking about the marketplace, which is what we were speaking of IEA, and um, some of the some of the distractions we may get caught up with. Which you know, even in just thinking about that, not really a distraction because um, it can it can be a distraction, but it's all it also kind of uh, sometimes you need those experiences. You know, it's almost like there there are no mistakes kind of thing. You know, sometimes you need certain experiences to develop yourself, to help you um, to help you find that purpose. Because if you've forgotten what you went to the uh, what you were going to the store for, oftentimes you'll stop and you know you might ask somebody or you might try to find somebody. Hey, can you can can you call my mom or can you you know you might have to stop and make a phone call, whatever it is. So sometimes the things we encounter on the way uh, to the market are part of the design as well. So they're not always just. Uh, negative I said negative distractions because sometimes they can help us as well you know um, I'm bringing another caller in 510 peace 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 oh, hold on let me turn, turn my speaker down I'm sorry okay there we go can you hear me yes peace camp peace. peace this is uh Brandy Brother MGC. Okay. Ah, peace. How are you? Greetings, Brother Ray. Peace, Brother. How you feeling today? Well, well. Oh, I'm energized. Right. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Good to hear. I had a uh, quick question. Uh, I was listening to uh, uh, Chief Speaks, um, I think the last one that he did, um, and he was mentioning... Um, uh, like consecrations uh, for Ifa, um, as well as initiations. You know, speaking on <clears throat> him doing uh, initiations, and um, I had a quick question as far as uh, what is the difference between initiation and consecration? Um, well, a, a consecration just kind of opens you up to certain energies. Uh, like, uh, for instance. Uh, you do find out which which energies you're working with, or I don't like to say on your head. A lot of people say that, but uh, which energies uh, are are really strong with you? But certain things are done to help open open that up within you, so that you can kind of commune with those energies a little bit better. And uh, initiation is more uh, well initiation. Well, initiate means to start. So it's almost like, and I, I think I heard Chief say this once before, it's almost like, you know, uh, when you join a church, you know, and they say, you know, they bring you up to the front and say, you know, who wants to, you know, the doors of the church are open and you go in and, and you actually join the church. So it's like you're being brought into the family or being brought into that particular culture. So an initiation kind of means just to start and that you're now being brought into that particular culture it does it's not necessarily uh it's not a thing where it's like okay now you're a priest or now you're this or that it's no you you were on the outside at first now you're being brought in a little bit closer but you're still just a church member so to speak so now it's up to you to kind of uh now you now that you're within the tradition you know it's just like you know a person that just goes to church every now and then versus a member a member knows a little bit more than just a per- about that particular church than a person that just goes every now and then. So now, you know, you've kind of become part of the community. You know a little bit more about the inner workings of the church, who's what, who's responsible for this, who's responsible for that. You can step up and volunteer to do certain things. You're now a member, but it just means to start. So it's just saying, like, your, your journey is now starting as a member of this community. Okay. All right. Excellent. And a uh, follow-up question. Uh, oh. Forgive me for my ignorance. Um, what uh, usually comes first, consecration or initiation? 
Well, within the Anu system, of course, uh, Chief always stresses education before either one. Um, if you if you think you are ready for a consecration, uh, there's usually uh, a reading and a consultation done before then. And so you would talk to Chief about certain things and he would decide if you are ready for that or if you're ready for initiation. So there, there are things, I, of course, I, 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 the consecration is like, um, it is a ceremony that brings you, uh, that brings you closer, but, um, an initiation is almost like, uh, kind of almost like a marriage, so to speak. It's like you're, you're being brought in even closer, just like the church example I used. You know what I mean? So now, because you can be consecrated and not be a part of the culture, so to speak. You see, you're having, you're having like a service done for you for certain things, but you're not necessarily in. Um, you're, uh, you're closer, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're closer, but you're not like a member. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Have you ever seen those things kind of like in church? It's like uh, getting baptized. Almost like you yeah. can get baptized, but it doesn't necessarily make you a member. Right. You know, um, so it's kind of like that. So it's like a service that you're having done. But uh, if you feel like you um, need either of those, there's usually a consultation done before chief will do any of it. Now, some people will tell you that you need, to, you know, immediately that you need to be initiated. You know, it just depends on the house. Um, I know when I got my reading, certain things were laid out. And um, again, with Chief, it depends on your development, you know, how you're coming along. And of course, he wants you to have a bit more education. Now, with Chief, I will definitely say a lot of the people that have been consecrated with him probably know more than a lot of initiates that I've run. That's been my experience. Um, I've ran into some people that have been initiated that don't know a whole lot. As a matter of fact, we have a lot of them in our classes because they don't know, (laughs) because they just went and had a ceremony done. Um, So uh, it it really depends. I, I would definitely say learn as much as you can first before you get into it, because you're not even really sure. There's so much that goes into an initiation. It really is. It's, it's more than just the ceremony or, or even the consecration. It's, it's more than just having something done to you. So it's it's a big step. Both are big steps. And I would really try to soak up as much information and knowledge about what you're about to do before you do it. I know a lot of people tell you to just get initiated, but I wouldn't say that that's a good decision to make. And is getting initiated is that the uh, is that synonymous with saying uh, getting your right hand in Ifa? No. Right hand. Mm-mm. Terminology. No. I don't even like to use certain terms. First of all, I it, it, I don't, it's not, but I don't um, like I said. An initiation just means to start. So again, using the church model, you come to church on Easter and Christmas. You know, that's it. So that's one level. And then you say, okay, you know what? Now I want to join the church. I want to be initiated. That's why when that happens, they they bring you up. The whole community, the church community welcomes you in. They bring you in. They take you for, you know, a few hours for orientation to get you to get you to understand the culture of the church. This is who we are. This is our motto or our creed or whatever they call it. This is what we do. This is what we believe. This is, you know, they lay all this stuff out for you. You have to go through an orientation. So that's kind of what initiation is. It just means I'm beginning. I'm starting within this culture. I'm starting within this church. Now I know who Sister Blah 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 is. I know uh, who to go to for this. I know who's on this board. I know who's on that board. Um, uh, And now I can, you know, now I have to start working within the community of the church. Now I'm a member. I'm a member of the family. So 
<clears throat> that's what that is. Um, when you when you hear all these terms, sometimes a lot of the information you get is probably like in books or on the internet, and you don't really know um, which tradition they're coming from. You don't know if it's coming from Santeria. You don't know if it's coming from Lukumi. You don't know if it's coming from, I don't know, 21 Divisions, um, uh, uh, Palo Mayombe. You know, there's so many different things and different terms that each group uses. You really have to, again, that's why I say education is, is important because you'll come in thinking like, I mean, so I'll ask you, what is right hand of Ifa? What does that mean? That's what, that's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> right, right. That's so it's I'm like, I mean, about. where did you even hear that? Um, in a consultation. Okay. So did you ask them? Um, I didn't. I should have had it. I should have at yeah. the time, but I was I was very very new to everything. Mm-hmm. So I so you know I was uh, figured that you know I would run into that information, you know, as I continued on, you know, in my past, because I was, you know, a lot of everything was pretty much new at that point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, when we have these consultations and you go to these different people for readings, you really got to start asking questions. I don't know why people kind of get a little shy and are afraid to ask questions. It's just like going into a store. Have you ever been into a store, like a clothing, a clothing boutique or something like that? And you walk in and you start talking with a salesman. If you ask a salesman, what do you need? They're going to tell you everything. Oh, you need to, you need to make sure you get this. You need to make sure you get your belt. You need socks. You need underwear. You need a tie. You need a a sports jacket. You you need a dinner jacket. You need this. You need that. Uh, You need some cufflinks. You need this. You need that. They're going to, they're going to tell you, you need everything. (laughs) But not at one point does the person stop and ask like, well, why do I need a dinner jacket? I don't, I, I don't, I just came in here for, you know, I just came for a sweater or something. Like, why are you saying I need a dinner jacket? You have to ask questions because the thing about it is you have the potential to do a lot of things. Um, there may be, you may, your purpose may be to, I don't know, be an astronaut or something. I don't know. But um, just because that is your, just because, that purpose has been kind of outlined for you. Like there's a whole lot of things that you have to do before you get there. So it's like, you, you got to start asking questions. You had, I know when I had my, my reading done, I was like, okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? Can you spell it for me? What does that mean? And so if I did, if, if I asked what it meant and, and she told me I'm not supposed to know right now, then at least I got that answer, but I'm going to ask, what does that mean? How do you spell it? Where does that come from? What, can you break the word down for me? Okay, and if this is my purpose, how am I supposed to get there? I don't have a clue. Like, I'm so far off from there. What, what's, what's my first step? Okay, so you got to start asking questions. And again, like I said, a lot of the information we get off the Internet or read in books. Um, I've said this before, and she has said it before, too. These books aren't necessarily coming from people who operate within the culture. They're like term papers from uh, college students, thesis papers that somebody turned into a book. So they're they're experiencing it from the outside. It's just a paper. They're not even participating in it. So you don't have too many books out there that are actually written by people who are in the culture. So most of the information you'll find is coming from Santeria or I've seen uh, Candomblé. I've seen a lot of videos um, on Candomblé you have all these different cultures um, speaking on it from their perspective. And so things are, things are different. They call di- things different. I think like even in Santeria and I think um, Amwar, you can probably answer this. Like you all get like warriors and all this kind of stuff. Like you get several elekes and, and things when you first, uh, when, you, right. when you come in. That's not necessarily but- true. With um, right. uh, with I'll say even the way I um when the elections that I have, I don't have all of those, and she doesn't give you all of those. I don't think not everybody. 
So it's different for uh, even the colors are different. Uh, it depends right. on the tradition that the you come size from. Of the, the size is even different. And it's yeah. funny, uh, just, to, just to kind of chime in on that though, with the with the Alekis, is that the Alekis are supposed uh, traditionally, I believe, they go down to the belly button. And a lot of people understand the death of the. It wasn't until Chief explained the reason for that belly button to be well mm-hmm. protected for that uh, for that Alekis to be down there by that belly button, and uh, I never understood it. I, I I still don't understand why they give out Alekis that only go straight to the heart. Which which is very interesting for me, but mm-hmm. just a p- side note side note on that situation, mm-hmm. and um, you know I I just uh, my biggest concern. Uh, hold on, let me come to a stop real quick. Mm-hmm. Kind of loud. Um, okay. My biggest concern that I had in coming starting from the Santeria uh, Cuban side of mm-hmm. uh, Ifa is that um, I was just given. I was just told we got to do this, we got to do that, we got to do that. I didn't have any mm-hmm. explanation. I jumped into it two feet first and never did not understand it. I was told I couldn't do anything with the stuff I got, and uh, come to find out, it, they're absolutely wrong. These are my things. I purchased them. Once again, going back mm-hmm. to that marketplace, we came mm-hmm. down to purchase something. I came down to pr- purchase mm-hmm. protection and guidance to these these trinkets, and I should be able to do anything I need to do with these trinket trinkets to make my navigation here on the planet to be uh, to 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 give me proper navigation through the planet so mm-hmm. uh, that that was my thing about it and then i also had like my own personal things that i've gotten over where uh mm-hmm. just didn't i wasn't i wasn't enjoying being told to be ser- uh, some somewhat of a servant by somebody that's not my not my culture like wasn't mm-hmm. really african I didn't. Yeah. I didn't enjoy that. I didn't like that relationship. I, I, I've, I've had. I've fought, fought that relationship mm-hmm. for a very long time in my life. My life, and I just didn't enjoy that. It, it just wasn't. It wasn't resonating with me. And then on top of that, yeah. knowing the character, like now, like, I knowing the character of the people that was that I got initiated from. You know that's that wasn't. Uh, it wasn't me. I wasn't behaving on that type of level. I was behaving a lot more peaceful and a lot more, uh, 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 what's the word? Uh, uh, I wasn't trying to harm anybody, no matter mm-hmm. what I did. I was a very peaceful person, you know? Very mm-hmm. defensive, but very peaceful. And um, uh, knowing the people that I, that I got my initiate, initiation from and things that they were doing, which is like against my own character. So, mm-hmm. you know, it took me from chief to learn that, you know, character is everything. You know, you, yeah. you can not be initiated. You can not have nuts, one single thing right. of African traditional systems. But if you mm-hmm. have good character, it you're, trumps your days everything. Will be long. You're, yeah, yeah, exactly. Trumps, trumps everything. Your days right. will be long. And, happy. and just to add what you were, add on to what some of what you're saying, even with the Alekes, they can be different. They're not always the traditional uh, glass bead alekes that you see. I know, um, I remember uh, one of the retreats we went to where um, Chief was consecrating uh, some people. The alekes that they received were completely different from each other. They weren't the traditional, you know, white glass beads or red and white or, you know, whatever it was. They're comp- it's up to the priest's uh, discretion as to how they look and, you know, and, and the materials that are used for them. So that can be different. Um, another thing Chief has said is like, you have to understand this, this is, uh, even he touched on a little bit last time, this is a cosmic uh, tradition, uh, not necessarily African. So it's like, if you're even on the continent, think about how many different uh, uh groups there are on that continent not everyone practices uh this tradition the same way you can be in lagos in one spot and go five miles up the road they practice it completely different or they have completely different names for it it's similar because it's nature-based but it's not there are no set rules to how this should go because it's nature-based and it's explaining uh, your purpose and, you know, that particular culture's relationship to nature. 
or um, how they came to the planet, all those things that make up culture, how they came to the planet, what their importance is, what are the relationships supposed to go like, how do we dress, eat, talk, interact with each other. Your culture teaches you all of those things. So if the cultures are different, of course, the religion or the spirituality that they practice to tap into that is going to be different. So it's not the same everywhere. And um, there's a video I posted on uh, my Facebook page yesterday where um, there was a person from a Santeria tradition and a Yoruba person saying the same words differently. So like, for instance, uh, they had a person, they say, okay, how do you, you know, like, how do you say Oshun? So the Yoruba person would say Oshun, the uh, Santeria person said Ochun. Uh, some, you know, they show the difference in between uh, just different words in this particular tradition. And it is a difference and it makes a difference. There's, there's a, it's a big difference between the two. They're not the same. Just if, even if you listen to how the words are pronounced, it's different. It's just like, your name is Randy. If I called you, I don't know, uh, if I called you Sandy, would you turn around and answer? No, because that's not your name. <laughs> you know, if if somebody calls you something different than what your name is, uh, it depends on the relationship. Like your wife may call you something completely different. So she's calling upon an aspect of you that nobody else has tapped, really tapped into. Your your children may call you something else. So when they use that name, they're tapping into a certain aspect of Randy that's different from everybody else. I don't know those names. So I'm calling you Randy, but if a person off the street just yells out Sandy, you're not going to turn around, right? Right. Yeah, so, the, so it does make a difference. And these different cultures and what they call different ceremonies and everything, it makes a difference. So you really have to, you really have to study the culture of the people that you're going to for all this information to see, you know, is this something I want to get into? You know, like even I knew it's a blend of different things that Chief has kind of modified for this time and for the location that we're in. So you in? really have to kind of. <laughs> And that can, and that goes to and that go can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. And, and that goes and that goes to what we were just talking about and uh, learning that some of these distractions, some of these maybe bad decisions, or some of these mm-hmm. routes that you went through was a learning experience. You know, right. I've learned now now that I won't go to just everybody to go get a. Uh, initiation or even a reading. Mm-hmm. I know that I right. have people that, that are on my side that I can sit there and say they have good character. I can I can trust in the divination because this person matches my, my vibration, you know? So mm-hmm. once again, going back to the planet inside of the marketplace and, and going through uh, bad what we call bad decisions or what we call good decisions to learn greater experiences. So... You know, I, I, it, it's it's a learning experience. That's really what it is. Yeah. Is that something you were thinking about, Randy? I, did, I didn't get the last part of what you said. Uh, uh, I'm more, it's, a more, it's more of a learning experience. The the bad decisions, like let's say we go to Ile and they just tell us to do what they want us to go and get all these things done, all these initiations, receive all these uh uh, uh, um, uh, Orishas and put them in our house, and we're not allowed to do anything. Listen, we have to go to them every time we need something done. So uh, we, we learn from our journey that once we actually start taking the steps to do things ourselves and start to build our own good character, and understand that the people that are around us might not have good character. But they're telling us to do things, and they that they wouldn't even do themselves. So just the character is important, and that's what I was more making the the situation in is the character is important. The learning experience that we get from going through a certain situation is important. But if you're in a in a situation where the character is perfect or the character is good, the character is resonating with you, 
that means that you're in the pathway, you're in a place where your path is going to be a lot easier. Because when that character is right, and when when the family, the community, they all have good character, they can push you along and move, help you move along in a more of a direct direct way that's going to resonate more for you. And that's the mar- that, that's what we were just talking about with the marketplace, is that sometimes we, we might go through these experiences that might be uh, bad to say. It might be bad or a bad situation mm-hmm. to say. But uh, we learned from those bad situations that we don't have to do this this way ever again because we learned a lesson. And sometimes we need those lessons to move forward. Yeah. Is um, uh, is that something you were thinking about doing, Randy? Going forward? No, I'm, I'm no uh, uh, initiations yeah. and consecrations and things. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, at some point, yeah, when, I, when I'm ready to do so, yeah. But um, mm-hmm. like you said, I'm learning things right now. Yeah. And um, yeah. Get, get my point. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's, it's difficult to make the right decisions when you don't understand the decision that you make. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So if I were you, I would definitely um, learn all that I can before uh, making either commitment. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I appreciate was, uh, No problem. There was, some, there was something I said earlier, if you heard the, the spoken word I did earlier. And this goes into what we were talking about. And let me just find it so I can repeat it correctly. Um, I said, uh, through the journey, we'll, we'll find that there was no good or bad, just that we weren't wise enough to choose correctly. And that comes mm-hmm. from that comes from our Odu. And um, I guess whenever you whenever you hear that Odu comes up, uh, you'll you'll hear it whenever that Odu comes up in your life, if it does. So, mm-hmm. but that that's. Um, something that we got to look at is that, you know, we're not, we're here to, we're here to uh, consume and produce. So those this consumption that we do, whether they were good or bad consumption, we learn from and we gain wisdom from. So. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right. I'm going to bring it, Randy, if you'd like to jump in the conversation, you can, I'm not going to mute your mic. So whenever you have a question, you can just come in. Go ahead. Uh, Thank you. Quick question. Mm Mm-hmm. Did you mind if she jump in and ask a sure. question? Sure, no problem, no problem. Hey, greetings, everybody. Hey, sister, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. I'm well. Yeah. Greetings. Um, my quick question was, um, I was wondering if you or anybody else, like on the call, experienced like um, seeing a white light, like during meditations or like in your dreams and. Um, I was wondering if this is a bad thing because I know some people experience it like, you know, in near-death experiences. Mm-hmm. And, um, I kind of remember she mentioning something about the white light like uh, a, while ago, a while ago. So, But I kind of remember being sort of like a bad thing if, if I'm, you know, remembering it correctly. But um, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Is, it, is that thing? I don't remember. What, you were in meditation and you saw a white light or how did, what happened? Like I seen it when I was doing uh, yoga one time. I closed my eyes to get ready to do meditation, and my, when I closed my eyes, my vision it was I just seen white, and then it it mm-hmm. went back to normal. And then I've also what, seen it like in, it went from white to what? Just back to black. Like you know, when you okay. close your eyes, it's like you know, it's dark, it's okay. black. But mm-hmm. when I closed my eyes, everything was white. And then okay. uh, I seen it in dreams. Uh, mm-hmm. Everything turned white, and I wake up. Mm-hmm. Kind of interesting. Now, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you what I know on it, and, and maybe Chief can expound on it a little bit or if you ever get the chance to ask. But I know there are certain meditation exercises that you can do, and when you close your eyes, say, for instance, if you close your eyes and even position your tongue a certain way within, in your mouth, and you just kind of, and you sit there for a while, a certain color will flash. It can be white, it can be black, it can be red, green, blue, whatever it is. But that's showing you at that moment what chakra is are, you're, you're operating in at the time. 
So the fact that you saw white to me represents the crown chakra. But black can also black can also represent the crown chakra. So sometimes if I do it, and if you do it long enough, you'll start to see a change perhaps. If you sit there long enough, because sometimes I've closed my eyes and I've seen it's just been red or mm-hmm. orange or yellow. Sometimes it'll be green or blue. Sometimes it'll be white. Uh, it just depends. But um, it's a certain, there's different meditation techniques that you can actually do. But uh, to, um, to see those colors or to see, after a while, you even start to possibly see uh, vision. For me, I know this happens a lot. Uh, matter of fact, in the, I think it's the third eye class that I just did, I um, put in a technique to help you develop that third eye. And, and that's one of the things that happens is like, if you sit there and you meditate long enough, and or even if you do this at night when you're asleep, and I like to do it like with an eye mask sometimes, because sometimes we'll try to, our, we'll try to open our eyes up doing this. But if you do it like with an uh, with an, an eye mask on when you're sleeping, <laughs> if you close your eyes and keep your eyelids closed, but actually open your eyes behind your eyelids, if that makes any sense, <laughs> yeah. um, like you said, you'll start to see you'll see a color. But if you hold it there long enough, and depending on what your purpose of meditation is, you can actually start to have vision. You actually start to have visions. It depends on, you know, your breathing techniques again and, and what your purpose is for going into meditation. But, yeah, it, it happens. So I don't think it's any reason to panic. Um, it could possibly mean that, you know, that's the chakra that you were working with at this particular time. Okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. No problem. Peace. Peace. Hey, Sister All right. Tim, I, I, I got a quick question, just a quick question. Uh-huh. What happens when, let's say you're in a meditation and everything starts to pixelate, like in, in squares? That's happened to me twice, um, like a couple times, actually, after, every time I meditate. What happened uh, after that first, happened? The first time I was, the uh, first time this happened to me, I was by my fire. Uh, it was late night. Uh, I had a fire on. Uh, mm-hmm. I was looking towards, uh, I think Sirius, Sirius A or Sirius B, mm-hmm. or, or or Orion, Orion, the whole nebula. I was looking mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. one of the stars, and I just continued to look and look and look and look. Eyes open. I wasn't. They didn't have my eyes closed. It's just eyes open, stare, stare, stare for a good 15, mm-hmm. 20 minutes, and then it just seemed like everything just pinpointed for me to the star, mm-hmm. and everything around it just started pixelating for me. Mm. Oh, that's what that, that was the experience I had. I just I didn't, never mm-hmm. really spoke on it, <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, I didn't really know what to say about it. And then, How long were you able time, to hold it after things uh, started to pixelate? The first time it happened, I held it for probably a good, uh, I would say about three three minutes. But okay. after that, you after, after I got the three minutes, or did it yeah, shift? The, pix- the, pix- the pixels seemed to kind of wave. It kind of seemed to wave. It's okay. like the, the star the star was what I was focused on, and everything outside of that, it just seemed to wave itself like 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 to the star. You know what I'm saying? Because the star mm-hmm. was focused, but the, everything around it was pixelated. I, I, so, okay. and, and I've had that happen to like like deep, uh, like night nighttime meditation sitting in my room, but not mm-hmm. in... Not not to what not to the experience that I just told you about, mm-hmm. but not to that that extreme. The other one is just uh, the light start pixelating, pixel like real pixel like squares. <laughs> yeah, I had that, yeah. That, so. Um, now the pixels, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you might need to ask Chief about that. I don't know why that happened. Um, the reason why I actually like how long did it stay like that is because sometimes, um, it will shift into something else but sometimes we don't have the the uh the training or the practice to sit through it long enough to to see what happens we'll either open our eyes or we'll shift our vision or move because we can't really believe we're saying what we're saying so we're just kind of freaked out by it not freaked out but just kind of surprised by it. we're like whoa whoa what's going on and we'll blink and lose the vision or we'll you know 
move our eyes or, or whatever it is and come out of it. That's why I say a lot of times um, when I first started getting into meditation, sometimes I would wear an eye mask just so I wouldn't um, open my eyes, on, you know, on purpose. <laughs> Or, or I used to sleep with a mask sometimes when I went into like self hypnosis or something like that, just so I wouldn't um, forcibly open my eyes because it's it's really weird. It's just like the first exercise in in the new spiritual training when thing when you're staring and things start to happen, it's almost like whoa, wait a minute, what am I saying? How did I do that? And you break your concentration or you break the focus and it messes the whole vision up. And you got to start all over again. So sometimes I will wear an eye mask. Um, it's gotten, of course, I've been doing this for you for a while, so I've gotten better with it. But and you know, I can keep my eyes closed. But um, if it happens again, or if you're in meditation again, what I would say is sit there and hold it for as long as you can, and see if uh, the image starts to shift or if something else starts to happen. Because possibly maybe a picture was about to form or maybe something was about to happen. And, you know, at the at the moment that that was about to happen, you may have shifted your focus or you may have snapped yourself out of it. Yeah, that, that's what happened too. It's like I, mm-hmm. I after the first time I, I got distracted and it went, went away. And then the second time I tried to do it, I always, mm-hmm. like a couple seconds, it happened. And then I could, just couldn't do it after that. Yeah, yeah I, and this this is probably one of the reasons why taking the meditation class could have helped me out with those certain things like that mm-hmm. too. So yeah, um, you'll you'll find in that class uh, there's an exercise I do at the end where I'm trying to teach you uh, different breath, teach you how to breathe, and um, there are certain things that you can say to start to um, make yourself relax and almost go in. Like I said, it's kind of a self hypnosis kind of thing where you can just kind of put yourself into meditation quicker. And so like, like now I can probably go into meditation. Like I I can do it pretty fast, like within, you know, just maybe five, less five minutes or less, like just go in, go there just because, you know, it takes some time to practice. But once you, once you keep up that, once you keep practicing those breathing techniques and you go through the different relaxation uh, methods to kind of get your to to become get to a point where you're unaware of your body, you'll be able to do it a lot quicker because that snaps us out of meditation too. A lot of times, we as soon as you start to meditate, you'll start to feel it itch or tingle or you got to scratch or you got to move or you you know, so you got to um, ha- you have to be able to relax your body well enough to where you don't even feel you don't even feel it. And, and your mind is not on that. And you'll be able to go into meditation a whole lot quicker than before, especially with the breathing techniques. So, yeah, that, that, that's one of the things in the, in the meditation class that we go over. And you'll find that once you learn how to do that, um, your rituals and your magic will be a lot different. Because sometimes you have to be able to uh, zone out sometimes and and kind of come out of yourself to do certain things it's almost like i know you all have probably seen the golden child <laughs> and uh what is yeah. it start on yeah. Nufa, the guy remember the part where he rolled out the carpet and he was trying to channel the devil the so-called devil with the dragon or whoever it was yeah yeah and he started to chant he started doing his um you know he started doing like this uh this making this sound and his eyes rolled, you know, he rolled his eyes up into his head, started making the sound. He was in, um, he wasn't in Lotus, but he was, he was on his knees, had his hands on his thighs, and he started breathing. He took a deep breath. He went through these few little steps before, but it didn't take him very long. As soon as he got there, you saw that it transformed him to, you know, and he made a connection with this, this spirit he was trying to channel like within a few seconds and so that's what we talk about in that meditation webinar too is like certain sounds and certain uh positions that you sit in too also affect your magic so like even in that movie they it was just a glimpse and i'm not saying that it was correct or anything but it just showed you the things you have to do so you have your sacred little space he rolled out his carpet or you might have a, a meditation cushion or something like that and you um you sit down, 
you can either sit in a chair or you can lay down or you can you know on your cushion and your hands are on your on your thighs or whatever and um you take you do certain breathing techniques you might make a sound um and then uh after after a while like i said those breathing after doing those breathing techniques you become kind of become unaware of your body so the itches and the scratches and the tinglings and all this kind of stuff doesn't distract you and you can just kind of go ahead and go into wherever it is you're trying to go and do the work that you're going to do. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. You know that there's one scene in that movie just that really just threw it off to me. Mm-hmm. That oatmeal scene when he takes his spoon oh. and dips it in the oatmeal. <laughs> You know, I don't nasty. like oatmeal at all. That was, so yeah, that was nasty. That was Eddie. That was Our Eddie poking into the... Uh, yes. ugh, I still don't like oatmeal to this day. I promise, <laughs> oh, oh, I promise you when I was a kid, that freaked me out so bad when I saw that movie. <laughs> and then I yeah. watch it now, I'm like, oh, that looks so corny. But at the time when I saw it, I was just like, oh, God, that is so nasty. <laughs> you know, I, I don't like oatmeal either. <laughs> yeah, I can't stand that you know, I don't mind eating oats when they're dry or, like, uh, yeah. maybe with some honey, yeah. you know what I'm saying, or, like, in a bar, mm-hmm. an oatmeal bar. But mm-hmm. if it's cooked and, yeah. it's, and it's, <laughs> if it's in the house and I smell it, it's just automatically, like, a uh, gag reflex, like, uh. It takes you there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, oatmeal. Yeah. And lima beans. Yeah, lima beans. I don't like lima beans. That movie was a trip. That that thing that thing freaked me out too. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that that is the movie. Um, uh, let me let everybody know if you'd like to make a comment or anything. We've got about uh, forty minutes or so left in the show. The number is five one five six zero five nine eight six two. We had a caller on the line. I don't know if they dropped or if they they uh, they're coming back. Um. I was trying to get to him, but I, I, um, we were talking a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to bring in 662. Greetings. Hey, hey. How's everybody doing? Well, well how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. This is Michelle. That was yeah, me on the line. I just had to <laughs> step, a loose, step away for a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I know your voice now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad everybody's doing good. good. <laughs> Yeah, it's cold down here in the city. Yes, it is. It like turned overnight, didn't it? I think it's like yes. in the 30s here. It's like it got below freezing overnight. Woo. Mm-hmm. I was I was trying to get in on that conversation with uh the Anwar and then you all were talking discussing the uh <laughs> different um I guess it'd be the different elegs and how they do things. Mm-hmm. Because when mm-hmm. I got, um, I guess I could say consecrated because mm-hmm. it's really confusing to me because, well, my godmother at the time, she said, well, this is what you need to do. And she, I went to mm-hmm. her house and it was a consecration, I guess, because I had to take a special bath and this and that. And she gave me an old do. Mm-hmm. that I still haven't figured out to this day and that's been about 17 years ago mm-hmm. and she gave me a uh, a Yoruba name that I haven't figured mm-hmm. out to this day I've been working on it though because mm-hmm. I've been listening to the chief break down the different yeah. uh, words and stuff in Yoruba so I'm working mm-hmm. on that Yoruba. but I was trying to ask her <laughs> questions uh-huh. and okay. uh I just couldn't get any answers. She'd be like, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this, and this will tell you about it, and I'll get it to you next week, and I'll get it to you next week." Okay. And she might not have known. She might not have. I kind of lost touch mm-hmm. with her now. Yeah, she maybe she didn't know because I don't, you know, for the most part, usually they'll tell you they'll either give you an answer or they tell you maybe you're not ready for it yet, or you know, or whatever. Um, if she if she keeps putting you off, to me it sounds like she ain't no she didn't didn't know herself. Um, you gotta well, remember you come like, up with how can they come up with the old do if they don't know? Um, that's a good question. How did she come up with it? <laughs> if she didn't, you know, if she didn't know her stuff, I don't I don't know because I don't know your experience or the woman or anything, but uh-huh. uh. 
you know, know, doing a reading. So I don't even know what you had. I don't know if you had, you know, a consecration, initiation, or a a spiritual bath, a cleansing. I I mean, I don't know. Um, Because Odu, Uh. you get Odu's for different things. That's not necessarily saying that was your birth Odu or it might have just been whatever's going on with you at the time or whatever was going on with you after you had all these um, things done for you. You know, you go in one way, you might come out another. So something is casted afterwards. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, before you before you get ready, before you shell out the money to have these things done, you need to know what you're paying for or and why you're doing it. Yeah. Mhm. It was to get the lake agent to get as you that I'm still not real. Mhm. Versed in yeah. working with, you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Are you in the class, Michelle? I am. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. How come you don't come? You I need am. to get on the call with us on Mondays. Are you working Monday nights? I I don't go into work until eleven. Oh, okay. So uh, go to a newlifeglobal.org and say you want to be a part of the women's call to um, so we can send you the information to get on the call because we talk about a lot of the stuff that goes on in the class sometimes too during uh, okay. during the call. It's Mondays at 8 Eastern time. Yeah, I did, so for you Kim, but I didn't get the information. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, I have to talk to uh, the organizer and see if she's updating that list. Did you say you want to be part of the call? Yes, I I, I do. Okay. Okay. I'll check and yeah. see if the list has been uh updated with the information. But yeah, so we'll we'll talk about some of this stuff um so you can kind of understand what happened. <laughs> what happened to you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what she did. I I don't know. So, you know, I I really can't um, speak on it. Mm-hmm. And it kind of but, threw me off, and I I really haven't been practicing until like the mm-hmm. last two or three years. I had just kind of mm-hmm. wasn't doing anything. Yeah, where did you so. go? What area of the, Nash- of the country? Nashville. Okay, okay. Are they still there? Uh, not anymore. No. Okay, okay. So, so you can't find we... her anywhere. Oh, I, she's in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Well, have you tried mm-hmm. to reach her in Atlanta? I haven't, Sister Kim. I, I um, <laughs> if if I if I ask so many times, then I'm gonna think I'm bugging you, yeah. and I'm gonna, you know. Mhm. Okay. And it's been a while since she since she did it too, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I would try to reach out to her and ask her. I think I will. I mean, yeah. Reach out to her and ask her. What, what did we do? <laughs> what did you give me? <laughs> I don't know what any that of that stuff help. meant, and I, and I didn't, I didn't know to, uh, you know, I didn't know to ask at the time, or you know, I was just in a different mental space at the time, so I wanted to, because she might know something now, or maybe she'll have a reason why she didn't tell you then. I don't know. Okay, mm-hmm. I'll get in touch with her. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Is that all you have for all today? Right. That's okay. it for me. Thanks. All right, peace. Please. All right, four one six. Four one six. Four one six. Four one six. I think your your speaker's up too loud or something because I can hear myself echoing on your end. Hello? Yes. Hello, hi, Sister Kim and Cheryl calling. Peace, peace, Cheryl. How are you? Can you turn your, because uh, uh, I heard myself echoing in the uh, background. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I just mute. Yeah, okay. Just up. Okay. <laughs> peace, how are you? Hi, greetings. I'm good. How are you doing? Good. I'm well. I just wanted to touch into the topic that, um, the, the meditation topic real quickly. Uh-huh. Um, so for me, I noticed that because I've been meditating for years, right? But in the beginning, I was more mm-hmm. like unable to stay into it. Mm-hmm. Now I find like even right now, I'm at work right now, but mm-hmm. <laughs> when I do meditate and I want to do like a half an hour one, 
I have times where I find that I will be stuck in this meditation for hours and not realize it. Mm. Okay. And I don't know mm. how to, like, should you be cutting yourself off or should you be allowing it to, to continue? Um, you can snap yourself out of it. Um, for me, when I'm about to, usually when I'm meditating, it's either early in the dawning when I have time or mm-hmm. when I'm about to go to bed or something, or even when mm-hmm. I'm in bed. So I don't have to stop so my morning like ones I now. Stop it. Hmm? I've had to stop my morning ones now because I find that sometimes yeah. it doesn't happen all the time, mm-hmm. but I just never know when it's going to happen. I don't know if that means something like sometimes when I'm in it, like I've se- I've seen a lot like you like sometimes mm-hmm. I'm flying around and I don't understand like should I and I keep going it's like should I be looking for something? No, like, just let it happen. Really? Mm-hmm. Just let sometimes, it happen. And I'll, and I'll then, find myself yeah. thinking during it like I I was like okay I like am I supposed to be looking for something and I'll find myself like one of the longest ones is if I'm flying mm-hmm. around like I'll be like mm-hmm. going up high and I'll just keep going mm-hmm. I I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't yeah, know. Just let I just, it happen. And I'll, hmm? Yeah, just let it happen. Um, a really? lot of times when we go into meditation, people think like something is supposed to happen. Like, yeah. um, you know what I mean? Like, okay, I'm supposed to see something. I'm supposed to hear something. You know, unless yeah. you're like purposely astral projecting and you're trying to go to a certain place. But it's like um, when you're meditating, that is the experience. To just let okay. whatever whatever comes or whatever happens to just let it happen, just let it flow. You're not even if you can't calm your mind down because you'll find like when you first start out, like you can't stop thinking about stuff. But that's right. part of the experience yeah. too, is to mm-hmm. you know just be aware of how quick and fast thoughts come and go. So one right. of the things like I remember when I first started, I couldn't calm myself down because I was like, oh, I gotta cook. Oh, I gotta run and pay this bill. Oh, I forgot. I need to do this. Oh, yeah, you know what? That I forgot was about this. Oh, you know what? I talked to such and such last week. You know, before I finish this, I need to, you know, I had, like they say, the monkey mind. You start thinking of all types of stuff. And even some mm-hmm. of the things that worry you the most, like um, something that you may have been struggling with or something like that, that you think will just turn your life completely upside down. But in meditation, you'll notice that that thought really only lasts probably half a minute. If and that it goes long, away. Yeah. And it goes away. <laughs> so <laughs> it really it really just kind of makes you realize how transient things are. Like stop stop sweating things so much. Like these things come and go. You know, it's the right. ebb and flow of things. So it's like when when these things come up, you don't try to control them or you don't try to make yourself see something or make yourself uh, do something. You're just sitting and, okay. and just watching okay. it come and go. Just watching it come and go, and whatever happens happens. And then after the experience is over, of course, you no, know, you'll have time to think about it. Now, sometimes I know with me. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, sorry. No, that's that's another thing. Like I, I don't understand like the interp like how to interpret what I've seen or what mm-hmm. I experienced. Like how do I even know what that means? Because like it's mm-hmm. never actually in line of exactly what's happening. But I see a lot. Mhm. Mm-hmm. And then I find that things Wait. happen like weeks later, and then and then when it happens weeks later, I'm like, oh, that's where that I, I get it. There you go. And I'm I'm trying, yeah. but I want to be able to understand before it happens. If you understand <laughs> what I mean. Yeah, you can't rush it though. Because um, sometimes you have to uh, see this. This is where those classes that we do, like when we ter- or, uh, I'm about to put the animal totem, uh, animal totem webinar up, but uh, okay. just like different in- interpretations of things, uh, symbols, what symbols to look for, what right. an- you know, if an animal, how you you have to you have to be able to well, you have to know how to see these things. So that right, really exactly. just comes with your studying, okay. honestly, um, okay. it, how to how to interpret these things, and you can you can meditate on it as well. There are certain rituals that you can do to get certain information. Uh, there's okay. one in a commercial that I did on uh, my serious bitch YouTube page where if you want to know the answer to something, you can do a ritual where you put 
uh, like a tea light, you know, those little candles in the, in the mm-hmm. tin. You get a bowl of water and you right. put the tea light in the water, light the candle, and you can even sprinkle in uh, some herbs or, you know, whatever it is pertaining to the orisha that you want to work with or whatever. At the moment. With. But okay. you, you fall asleep staring at that candle. But you're, you ask, you're asking your question as you fall asleep, saying what it is you want to know. And so, yeah, I actually did hear that one. I did watch that one. Mm-hmm. I and haven't so tried if it. You yet. have a question? Yeah, you just have to be more interactive because it's not going to come to you instantly. Especially, mm-hmm. like, especially if you're kind of a, a a newbie to all this kind of stuff, it may take right. a week or two weeks or three weeks. But you'll notice that the more you study and the more you learn, it'll start to make more sense to you quicker. So it's not something right. that you would be like, okay, let me look up in a book. What does it mean? I was I was doing this in the dream, and to get an answer, right. it's a little bit deeper than that. So um, it really just you really just have to kind of expand your studies a bit. Right. Right. To, um, yeah. To figure out what that's it basically is. what I'm seeing too. Because like I mean, I've been meditating for years. It's been maybe about eight, mm-hmm. nine years now. It's just that the past maybe two years, I'm experiencing it a whole lot different than I used to. Mm-hmm. So, so, but I just and don't. I just change. now finally learning how to. Well, since coming to a new, I'm finally learning different meanings of things. So now mm-hmm. I'm actually able to right. understand things a little bit better. Right, right. Yeah. And then too, there are different types of meditation. So I'm not sure um, mm-hmm. even what type of meditation you had there. You can do uh, chanting. You know, that's something I do that. that I do. I do various um, kinds. Mhm. So uh, there, you can do chants. There are certain sutras and things that I practice. There are probably like a couple that I practice frequently. And I've mm-hmm. noticed that too, like uh, within within a, a few minutes of, of practicing that, because I have, you know, like the malas or whatever, and you do your rounds on your malas while you're doing the, the sutra or the, the chant. And after a while, you'll go kind of almost go into training. Yes. And yes. Certain, things will, yeah. certain things will happen. And it, and after it happened, I'm like, whoa! When did I even? I didn't even realize when I went into it. But um, that's what happens. Just, yeah. yeah. Just let it happen, and then once okay. it's over with, you know, then try to understand what just happened. Yeah, I think that's the yeah. problem. I'm trying to understand it at the same time. Like, I've mm-hmm. had the experience where my whole entire body feels like it's not even a part of my body. Like, yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not and explaining. That's part of I'm just sitting there trying to figure it out. That's part of it. That's that's like self hypnosis. Like, um, okay. like I said, this, these breathing techniques and certain things you do to put yourself in a state of meditation is like a preliminary step to a lot of other different things. You can do that before you get ready to do certain rituals. You can do that um, before you get ready to astral travel. Um, you can right. do that before, you know, it's, it's like, a, a, like I said, a preliminary step or, or step one before you get into something else to start to do something else. So like the self-hypnosis or the um, the things, the, the steps that I was saying to do in the meditation webinar to kind of, it, it, it relaxes your body to a point to where you're unaware of it. So right. you're not, so you're not twitching and moving and you're not distracted and scratching and all this other kind of stuff while things are going on because you're trying to tap into a higher consciousness. So actually your higher consciousness. So you don't want to be moving right. it because it's not going to happen as long as you have that monkey mind. As long as you're thinking about mm-hmm. all these, ten, you know, ten thousand different things and you're moving. So it's like a, a preliminary step before you can actually get into whatever it is that you're about to do, whether that right. be a ritual or, like I said, astral travel, whatever it is you're trying to do. You know, that's that's okay. like the first step. So those things, those breathing techniques, and all this other kind of stuff that we teach. You'll use mm-hmm. them again, you know, for different yes. things. Even yes, in the yes. training, we use, we do like fire breaths and certain things. And it's, it's for I've been reason. using that too, mm-hmm. outside of the, just like for rituals, I've been using that with just meditation as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So these are, these are just techniques, you know what I mean? To, okay. to get your body to a certain state, to be able right. to do okay. something else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that self hypnosis thing that that's really cool. I do that a lot when I do these uh, past life um, uh, experiences. 
that's really interesting. Right. Like, I've um, been doing it a lot. I just never, I just never knew how to understand it. But I guess I'm going through mm-hmm. the process. I'm going to continue listening and learning and go yeah. through the training, yeah. and and eventually I'll get there. Yep. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank you so no much problem. for that. I want to continue listening. I'm going to go back to my work. Okay. <laughs> I want to continue listening. Okay. See you, Cheryl. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right. All right. Peace. Bye-bye. All right, everybody, we got about 30 minutes left. Um, again, the number is 515-605-9862. If you have a question or a comment, make sure you just press the number one and I'll bring you in. Uh, for Randy, Anwar, and Michelle, again, I don't have your mics muted. So if you have a question or you want to jump in and say anything, it's totally fine. Um, no problem there. I see we do have some callers on the line. Uh huh. Oh, go go ahead, go ahead. I actually did a little no, quick. No, but they don't have their hands I, up, so go ahead. Okay, well, the serious be witch. The serious be. Mm-hmm. You are serious. You you are serious in the word that uh, in the in the word serious for the stars, mm-hmm. and you are serious when it comes down to the information that you kick. Not to stroke <laughs> your stroke your ego a little bit, but golly, that that you just opened up. Yeah, I know we are all we all are, but yeah, like I said, there's people like Chief says. Chief told mm-hmm. um, Nancy last time, it's like I'm further down the road than you are. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And, it, and once you recognize, <laughs> excuse me, once mm-hmm. you recognize that, once you recognize that, it's like then you can really m- navigate a little bit easier. Especially mm-hmm. when, like going back to what we were saying with Randy, is that when you have character, once you got that character, mm-hmm. and you know. This character is not here to harm me, but it is here to right. help me. And it's going to tell me good and bad things with love. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So just wanted to give you that shout out. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate serious, it. Serious. Like I said, I'm serious. still, <laughs> still <laughs> learning, too. I've had I've had a few yeah. experiences. But, the, um, yeah, that meditation, just to, just to be clear, like those classes that we offer on um, on Sudoku House, I really kind of encourage you all to to check them out. And the reason is because when you get into the our new spiritual training, uh, even if you when you get ready to do phase one of the training, there's a lot of things that we do within those rituals and those exercises that you may not have a clue about. Like um, I remember a student saying once too, or no, they sent in a question. And they were asking about what are five breaths? I don't know how to do them. Can you show me how, you know, asking for help on how to do them. And instead of this person kind of just looking it up in a book or going on YouTube or something and finding out, they just said, you know, show me how to do it or teach me, you know, what is it? But um, these classes that we offer are just that. It's like to try to give you a basis or a basic understanding of what you're doing in these different rituals. So for instance, like the water magic class, um, we, we give a lot of offerings. A lot of the times we, um, we work with rose water or Florida water and we're doing the offerings and we're doing all this different stuff with water. Well, what exactly are you doing or why do you even need to include water? Why are we even using it? So some of those things are important because what you don't know, like like Chief has said, he doesn't want to create followers. He don't want you coming to him for every little thing because he's not trying to take your money like that. So it's like by the time you get through this class, you're going to be able to, to put certain things together for yourself. You'll know how to put together a spiritual bath for, uh, I don't know, for if you're trying to bring in love or something. You'll know how to do, um, you'll know how to do certain things that you don't have to necessarily go and pay somebody for or, you know, or, or whatever. You, you'll be able, you'll have enough information and enough knowledge to know how to do it yourself because you'll understand what water is. You'll understand what a crystal is or how to use a crystal or what techniques to do with crystals for certain, you know, for certain rituals. Um, if you have to, have an oil for something and you maybe you live in a small town and you can't get to you know you don't have a place where you can just run in and grab a certain oil you can learn how to make it yourself um same thing with the herbs how do you know what herbs to use 
Mm-hmm. I can testify to the herbs. They made some cool tobacco oil. Came out good. Yeah. I still How use did that it. Come I made, out? I'm I made, that. It came out awesome. I'm talking about it. the tobacco that I used was actually from cigars, though. So what I just mm-hmm. did is mm-hmm. took the cigar tobacco, and yeah. it just has this wonderful aroma. I use it to clean everything. Uh, like literally, mm-hmm. it, it came out really good, really energized. I keep I, I keep it in uh the tincture the the the, the cup that mm-hmm. I got was like a tinted glass mm-hmm. cup or uh, mm-hmm. jar yeah. so I keep it in I mean it, it it was overwhelming so much I had so much of it mm-hmm. it's crazy <laughs> good so and yeah it was a good class see, a, let me tell you you start to see you you really will become like a a witch or a warlock <laughs> because. <laughs> I got so many uh, mason jars full of stuff and bottles of rainwater, uh, uh, thunder-infused water, salt water, river water, spring water, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. jars of herbs, different tinctures and everything for for different things. You'll you'll start to uh, start to accumulate all this stuff <laughs> for yep. different rituals just, or whatever. But I the thing about it is to know. Oh, sorry. oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying the thing to do, though, is to know how to do it yourself so that you're not always just buying stuff. Because yep. the, the thing that's going to have the most power in your rituals is if it's infused with your energy. If, 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 like, like you said, you made your own tobacco oil. I remember when I had to do something with tobacco oil a few years ago, I was trying to buy some. And it's so hard to find. I finally found some, and it's like maybe half an ounce. And it was like maybe 20 bucks or something like that. And I was yeah. just like, you know not, what? I could have made this myself <laughs> or whatever. Not only, and, that, not, not only that, that tobacco oil, just to put it out there, is that a lot of places don't won't sell that because it's still considered to right. be a uh, tobacco tobacco product mm, yes, a tobacco so, product so they can't sell right. it so what you're really getting you're not even getting real tobacco oil you're getting some right. type of fragrance oil or something and that's another exactly. thing like when sometimes when you go into those botanicas they have like all these pre-made washes and oils and things a lot of times some of it is just food coloring and 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 perfumes mineral or oil. yeah mineral, mineral oil or something uh, like that Exactly. It, it all smells the same. It all smells the same too. Mm-hmm. Stuff, <laughs> you know, stuff yeah. in the boxes. I, I look at that stuff like you guys are kidding me. I can go to the yeah. oil man. I can go to the oil man and get something way better than this. At least something that's exactly. more patchouli. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's like but, you uh, know to be able to have that information and that wisdom for yourself, like. If I don't have certain ingredients for something, I ought to be able to go in my backyard or in the woods down the street from me and 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 have enough wisdom to know what herbs or whatever I can pick to do certain things with it. Because if you think about it, that's what um, the people that were trying to imitate, that's what they did. And that's why sometimes it's dangerous. It's like, we don't have the same, we don't have access to the same plants and herbs and things that they do in Nigeria or Cuba or Brazil or whatever, or maybe call something completely different. So, I mean, what if, what if you're, you know, in Podunk, wherever, in the States, then what? You can't get all of those things. So now what are you going to do? You know what I mean? And you don't have the money to try to have it shipped from Nigeria. So, you know, so the the purpose of those classes is to kind of give you a basic foundation, a basic understanding of the principle of what you're doing, um, to understand that so that you can, so that your ritual, first of all, your rituals will become more powerful just because of the energy that you're infusing in it, but also just because you know what you're doing. So you you become even more confident in your rituals and you know what you're doing. So when we try to, you know, so now we can go into meditation and I can astral project or I can um, go, I can do certain things in ritual or I can, you know, whatever it may be um, for out, like for alchemy or something, I can, I can create my own tinctures. I can create my own spagyric so that I can reach a place of enlightenment, you know, so that I can 
so that my body can catch up with my mind as I'm going through these phases of enlightenment. Or if I just need a tincture for something. Um, you know, your grandparents, I don't know, maybe or maybe not, your grandparents had this kind of stuff all the time. You know, when such and such gets sick, they'll whip up a little something, you know, <laughs> or whatever. You can make these things yourself. You don't necessarily have to go to the health food store or wherever and shell out 30, 40 bucks. To make to get something you could have made at the house, you know what I mean. Same thing with the cleansing. You know, there's certain cleansings that you can do every day, or once a week, or once a month, or whatever. You don't have necessarily have to spend five, six hundred bucks on a on a plane ticket to try to get to the priest or or whomever you work with to, to give you a bath or head washing. So all those classes are there, and, and, and that's what they're there for, along with the training. Because on top of the training, um, on top of the classes, I mean, you get the training. So you're both are kind of working with each other so that you'll know exactly what you're doing when you're, when you're in it. So that information is there. So make sure you check those out. Um, and there are rituals and things even within the classes, rituals and exercises in each one. So make sure you check them out at thedulahouse.com. Um, let's see here. Mhm. Uh, I had a you 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 brought you made me remember something I wanted to bring up too. Synthetic okay. and reality, synthetic and what's real, and inorga- inorganic and organic. And I was okay. speaking about about the marketplace concept is that mm-hmm. what are we investing our, our travels into? Are we traveling ourselves? Uh, are we investing into uh, uh, inorganic and synthetic experiences? Or are we investing in what in real, in real experiences and organic experiences? And mm-hmm. I just wanted to touch that. That was just a topic that came up to my head when I, when I, when I was writing too. So, okay. Yep. Okay. Good. Cool. All right, yep. Randy, Michelle, we still got you here if you want to chime in with anything. And I see we do have some callers on the line, but no one has their hands up. So we got about eight, uh, 18 minutes left, 515-605-9862. doesn't have to be about the topic or anything if you have something else on your mind. That is cool, too. Um, and the meet, uh, before we go, I just want to um, give everybody some information because we still get these uh, questions in the inbox. If you have a question, make sure you send it to questions at anunation.org. If you want to join the ministry, and for a lot of the things that you want to do, maybe you want to do something within Anu, the first step, just to be on the call, is you have to, um, on the men's call or on the women's call, you have to sign up through anulifeglobal.org. So make sure you go there. Um, We have several YouTube channels. The main uh, the main channel for the shows. Remember that there are different components. The media component, which is where we do all the videos and radio broadcasts, is enlightenment and transformation. And we also have that website. So it's enlightenmentandtransformation.com, and you can find all of the shows and things on our YouTube enlightenment and transformation channel. And we also have a new nation on YouTube. Uh, Chief has his own channel. Um, Orisha Religion. We have, or is it? Called, I'm, I'm trying to remember the exact name, but you'll probably see them like on the side where they have suggested uh, videos. You can find all the Orisha information Orisha on our YouTube Yorba. channel. Orisha Yoruba. Thank you. Uh, Orisha Yoruba on YouTube. If you uh, want that information about all of that, um, Chief gives you information about the phase one training on his channel. And there are some other uh, things there. He has, I think, two full lectures on Anu Nation channel. Uh, they're about two or three hours, as a matter of fact. So you can you can actually um, watch the lecture. One, I think, was he was in Texas. And the other one, I think he was in New Orleans. Or either he was at a, I know one was at an expo too somewhere, but I'm not sure where it was. But whole two-hour lecture. Um, the school component is the Dulu House. So if you have any questions about um, the work, the school, 
the classes, the training, you're going to find that information on Sedulu House. So make sure you go to SedulluHouse.com. Anu Nation is like the hub of everything. So you can get to any of those sites through Anu Nation. There are links. There's information there. Um, you can sign up for the newsletter there. Uh, any Anything that's going on within, you know, any of those other components, you can find it on AnuNation.org. Um, let's see. What else? It's so or much. <laughs> Or just down the exactly that makes it that makes it so easy because you can do all of this stuff just from the app. Sign up for the classes, you can register uh, for a new life global. You can do everything from the app. So definitely makes and you can chat with people. So you can start your own little conversations and everything um, prior to the shows or even after the shows if you wanted to add something or, or had a question about something. So. Um, definitely download that app. Um, it's in the Google Store. The the that's the Android version. We're not uh, completely done with the iOS version, but it will be out soon. She's just working on that. So if you have a Google or excuse me Android phone, you can download the app. Uh, let's see what else is on it. I tell you, some of this stuff I always forget, and when I get off the call, I'm always like, oh, I forgot to mention this. <laughs> um, if you want to reach out to me, the 14 Keys, there's a, uh, the latest book the Chief put out. All the books, you can get to them through the app as well. So all the products that we have and that we offer, you can get through the app. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, you can uh, email me at SeriousBWitch at Gmail. Um, you can go to my website, SeriousBitch.com, under the same name on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, same name. So uh, the videos that I have uh, are there, and I'm still putting more stuff up as I go along. Um, The services that I offer, which are sales for money, love, blockage removal, and protection, you can find those either on the app or you can go to the website um, and and get those in the classes uh, that I facilitate are there as well. Um, let's see. The next webinar, I kind of fell behind in some of the webinars. The next one coming out is Animal Totem. That'll be up uh, possibly by tomorrow. I think I'll probably be completely done with everything tomorrow. So look out for that. Um, I'll probably send out an email and make some posts about it. So for those of you who are interested in animal wisdom and symbolism and you know, all this kind of stuff. Make sure you check that one out. I saw three deer just yesterday. And I know what that means for me, but <laughs> um, I was so happy. I, every time I, you know, you, you find yourself attached to certain animals. But anyway, um, Third Eye just came out. Um, we still have Dreams and uh, Sex Magic coming out before the end of the month as well. Um, let's see. What else? Am I forgetting something? I think that's about it. <laughs> Make sure you uh, tune into this show every Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, we are going to start doing this show daily coming uh, January. So if you know someone or if you would like to be a co-host, um, help out on the shows or anything, Make sure you let us know, but you got to be in the class to do it. So make sure you are working through the class. And and that's another thing we're going to start kind of helping you all get through the class. We're going to start a challenge in January to kind of move you along. Um, It's going to run from January to June. And so so we can kind of help you along each exercise and get you so you can get through with it. Because sometimes, you know, people are just kind of, you know, we're just kind of moving through it at our own pace, which is fine. But um, if you would like to participate in a lot of things that we do, you do have to um, have completed the training. Um, so we're going to get that started. There's a lot of things coming up next year. Um, let's see. What else? Mm-hmm. Hashtag the big, push. One, the big push. The big push. Okay. That's, 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 that's a good one. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we've got a lot of things coming up next year. Make sure, um, if you would like to join or be a part of what we're doing, make sure you sign up for it, you know, and, um, 
start to get some of this information, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and end the show. Uh, thank you, Anwar, for kicking off the topic for today. Um, no problem. And thank you all for listening and those of you that called in. So until next Tuesday, I am Kim. Enjoy your day. Peace. Peace out.